final cards for Dimension Force are here. Be one of the 33.4% of you have not smashed that little cover to that subscribe and smash it so we can get to 100k, baby. We're almost there, by the way. The remaining cards for Dimension Force are here. Uh, we got M Materiactor Anunus. What a card name, by the way. So, normal spell cards, you can only activate one card with this card's name once per turn. Detach one exit material from a card you control. If the detached card was sent to the graveyard, you can set this card to your field. Why do I want to detach and exceed material from something I control? Um, there doesn't feel like there'd be any real sort of application for that, let alone if the monster would go to the graveyard, I would then get to reset this card. The only real application I'd ever have, it, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I get it. I, I get that this is like for the material, whatever that weird ass archetype was. But, all right, sure, what, what an interesting time. Uh, this card is interesting. Uh, so this is a new Exceed monster that has a built-in win condition to it because I've seen this thing all over the internet today. Uh, people are losing their minds at this. So it's two level six monsters on a 600, 3000 defense monster. At the start of your opponent's battle phase, activate this effect, roll a six-sided dice. Assign the next six main monster zones on either field from the perspective of this card that is in the main monster zone. A number from one to six clockwise and move this card into the zone assigned the number of the dice roll. So basically imagine the monster zones as like, they have a, they have a very good definition of this here. So you'll see here that this is how we will move. This actually is pretty interesting. It dances around the board. So basically you give control of it to your opponent. So if there's a monster in the zone that this card is, is about to move to, attach that to this card as material. If it is an exceed monster, transfer its materials to this card. If this card has six or more exceed materials uh, attached this way, by the way, you win the duel. If this card cannot move into a zone, or if the monster is in a monster zone is about to move, and it cannot attach to that monster's material, send this card to the graveyard. Now, this card is a play on Sekatori, a sumo wrestler rank, while reading as something akin to musical chairs in the second name. This is literally Magical Chairs the Exceed monster, if there ever was one. I uh, so gimmicky, but the fact that this exists, we can do some uh, incredibly dumb stuff with this card in terms of just haha -ha funny things. All right, basically, uh, so they, they have a really good definition for this. So you assign the next six, it would land here. All right, next six, it would land here, all right? Literally, magical chairs, the exceed monster. We got Midday Sentinel here. Hmm, that's a level six. You can set this card from your hand to your spell and trap card zone, all right, as a spell card. During the standby phase of the next turn after this card was set, was destroyed and sent to the graveyard. And special in this card and destroy all cards your opponent controls in the same column as it. I am not a super big fan of this. The fact that you have to wait an entire freaking yeah, it's during the standby phase of the next round after the set card was destroyed. Yeah, that's horrible. All right, why do I want to wait to get a pop effect? All right, that's just horrible. All right, we got Mare of the Shore. Is this a new uh, Mermail? It's sort of rare, by the way. Okay, so Mare of the Shore, 1500, 1600. If this card is normal special, so you can send one Aqua Monster from your deck to the graveyard, except for Mare of the Shore. That's a generic dump. That's interesting. During your end phase, you can tribute this card to target one Aqua Monster in your graveyard, except for Mare of the Shore, add it back to your hand. You know, if we were in a little bit slower of a format here, um, I could find some sort of application and want for that effect. Because waiting till the end phase, that's pretty harsh. But I guess on summon now, having the ability to dump anything from the deck doesn't feel terrible. Just as a utility card in general. Okay, I'll take it. What is this? Yamatoko Orochi. Those are a lot of... Is he biting his own ear? What the heck is this thing? Level one, by the way. So, level one, water sea serpent tuner monster. Okay. 
If you use this card on the field as Synchro Material, you can treat it as a level A monster. So this thing can be a level A tuner. Huh. That Synchro Material, you can treat it as a... Does that mean that we can use this to make Ultimaya? Okay. A Synchro Monster that uses this card gains one of these effects based on its original level. Eight or less it gains eight... 100 attack or defense, 9 or more if it's attack, defense, or if attack's defense, which your monster gets trampled. I just like the fact that you can treat this as a uh, level 8 monster. That is pretty freaking interesting in terms of effect. Okay. And then we got Entroming Casket. Yo, is this the casket from, uh, oh man, that older Yu Gi Oh support? Like, oh god, like Great Dazara or like the. It's some really old stuff. So, you can only... Entombing Casket Sarcophagus. So you only use second effect of this card to once per turn. So when this card is destroyed by battle with an opponent's monster, you could take control of that opponent's monster, and if you do, that monster becomes a zombie monster, and its attack and defense each become zero. Okay, that's not horrible. When a zombie monster you control is destroyed by battle with an opponent's monster and this card is in your graveyard, you can banish this card, take control of the opponent's monster, and if you do, that monster becomes zombie and its attack and defense become zero. You know, I'm not going to lie, this is not a bad card. It just, when both effects are locked behind battle, sure, but that's not stopping you from not being able to rum, ram your own cards into the opponents to generate resource value off of this. That is something that you can actually do, ladies and gentlemen. I, that in and itself is uh, not too bad. I'll take that one. What the heck is this? Surprise. <laughs> the angry Moki Mokis are attacking. Oh, this is adorable. This is a quick play, by the way. Okay, Surprise Chain. You can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. Activate as Chain Link 2 or higher and apply the following effects in order depending on the Chain Link. You cannot activate this card if multiple cards with the same card name or the effects of such cards are already activated on the chain. This is very much a Chain Burn card. Excavate a number of cards from the top of your deck equal to this card's Chain Link number and place them on the top of your deck in any order. Okay. Send the top card of your deck to the graveyard for three or plus, or four or more draw a card. I feel like this is just a card made for chain burn to kind of escalate the amount of chain links that are being present on the chain. I'm not a super big fan of that, because just getting the excavate mill on this doesn't feel super good. There's like no payoff for this. And then we got Dream Pillow what this is adorable i love this he's just staring at me okay so we have a couple more cards here so you can only use first step fix this card's name once per turn so during the end phase you can activate this effect destroy the equipped monster okay so it blows up something the opponent has if this card sends the graveyard as a result of the equipped monster being destroyed you can swap some of one par parsimonia token with the same original type attribute and attack as the ones it was equipped to and then equip this card to that token Okay, that's interesting for a gimmick, I guess. Then we got the Pawn Shop Ledger Book. That's a Luster Dragon, by the way. Okay. So target up to two monsters your opponent controls. Banish them until the end phase. Then your opponent gains 1,000 life points for each card removed from the field by this effect. That's a chainable pop-off to give your opponent 2k life. I mean, yeah, they come back during the end phase, but that... That's not bad, right? That's number 78. I feel like there's an application to this. And then we got Vivid Trail. Oh, Vivid Tail. Huh, we finally we got a trap card for Masquerade's Tail. So you can only use either of this card's first effect or second effects once per turn, only once a turn. So you can target one card you control, return it to the hand. Okay. If this card is in your graveyard, you can target one face-up card you control. Set this card to your field, but banish it when you use the field. And if you do, turn that face-up card to your hand. You cannot activate cards or effects of cards with that name of the card returned to the hand for the rest of this turn. So this just gives you actual bouncing effects in terms of application for your own effects. Huh. So, overall, there's nothing too crazy in here. This Gold Sarcophagus card is pretty cool. And then there's whatever the heck is going on here with uh, Magical Chairs, the card. So, guys, please, if you comment down below, tell me what you guys think. Make sure you guys smash the little out of that subscribe button so you guys don't lose out more awesome content. And I'll see your beautiful faces back here later in the day. Some more cool awesome content. You guys stay safe out there, all right? Peace out, guys.
patrons. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.